And our first guests on the program this week are joining us via satellite from London. Uh, two gentlemen from a company called Empire Energy Corporation International, stock symbols EEGC. Uh, on your right is Mr. Malcolm Bendal. He is the founder and the CEO of the company. And the other gentleman, Mr. Mark Calloway, is director of corporate finance and business development. Gentlemen, welcome to uh, Money TV. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, it's great to have you here. Now, your company, Empire Energy Corporation International, you describe yourself as essentially a petroleum and gas exploration company operating through a subsidiary, Great Southland Minerals Limited, uh, looking for oil and gas in Tasmania, Australia. Can you tell us more about the company, please? Yeah, well, basically, I started the project in 1977, took up the first licenses in 1984, and uh, there was no uh, work on the area. It was a, a real frontier basin, no exploration, no gravity, no magnetics, no seismic. And so, basically, since 1984, we spent over 50 million Australian dollars uh, developing uh, all those databases with the uh, ultimate discovery of the Bellevue structure, which we're now on and uh, ready to drill. Now, gentlemen, uh, for those viewers watching the program who might be unfamiliar with oil and gas activities in Australia, can you tell us a little bit about your, your land there and, and why you chose uh, Tasmania? Uh, well, basically, the, uh, the Tasmania Basin uh, was unexplored. Um, I uh, was born in Tasmania and educated in Tasmania and did a lot of exploration in um, uh, mining uh, in Tasmania for minerals and also ran the exploration project for oil uh, because uh, I had uh, discovered uh, lots of oil seeps and uh, a lot of evidence that uh, there was a live petroleum system and uh, you know, dealt with uh, the problem of getting all that evidence into a uh, uh, format where we could get an independent, competent person to sign off on all those results and the potential of the basin, which we achieved last year with the RPS report, an independent expert report that uh, validated our results. You know, the first job, gentlemen, that I had out of college was in the oil business, and one of the old adages that I learned then was that the best place to look for oil is near where oil has already been found. Uh, is there a previous activity or current activity in your license area? Uh, yes. The uh, offshore uh, from Tasmania, we have the onshore tenement, but offshore there's production in uh, Bass Basin and the Gippsland Basin, and there's been uh, oil wells uh, <coughs> to the west of Australia. Uh, Tasmania and uh, there's similar age basins uh, onshore Australia to the Tasmanian rocks with similar structures that have been producing for some 50 years. The company's Empire Energy Corporation International stock symbols EEGC. If you'd like more information about this company, give us a call right now. Toll free from anywhere in the world, including Australia, 888-259-4449. Now, gentlemen, the company says that it employs leading-edge solutions and proprietary technologies for cost-effective uh, methods to locate, extract, and produce oil and gas. Uh, tell us about that part of your company. Uh, basically, because it was a uh, you know, frontier basin um, and because we had the challenges of, um, you know, that it was unknown and that a lot of uh, the standard techniques, scientific techniques uh, in seismic, acquisition and in gravity uh, because of the uh, the rock types which have a volcanic rock there uh, diabase uh, that's 800 meters thick um, this uh, created some challenges in drilling and also that had to be overcome and also in geophysics so we had to change the, uh, the wavelength frequency of the uh, uh, the seismic uh, to to get better defi definition of the seismic and we actually used uh, wavelengths too in the gravity to actually define the, uh, the structures, uh, literally seeing through the dolerite to where the, the domes uh, uh, could be identified, then to place the seismic lines effectively you know, over the top of those domes and we proved that that was a very effective uh, technique and uh, you know, that, that took 10 years to overcome that problem. Um, we first sh shot seismic on shore and identified the problems with seismic in 1987 and 1988 uh, but you know we didn't overcome those problems really until 2007 where we actually finally um, uh, were able to see very clearly through the dollarite. 
You know, I'm very familiar with Seismic. As I mentioned, uh, I was in the oil business uh, fresh out of college, and it was with a Seismic company. I was a land lease agent, and of course, that's the science of shaking the ground and creating a map of the subsurface, looking for pockets where oil might be. Now, you mentioned you're, you're dealing, in a, dealing in a frontier area. Uh, is it going to be difficult to transport oil once you do find it? Well, uh, first of all, the, it, it's an onshore uh, uh, concession, so that means that life is going to be a lot easier. Uh, there is uh, quite a lot of infrastructure already in place. So there's a two-way gas pipeline which connects uh, the mainland to Tasmania so that if we uh, come up with gas, then it should be a relatively easy uh, thing for us to connect in. Otherwise, there's a series of um, small terminals already existing on shore, and uh, we believe that we can probably, in the early phases, put in a, either a short pipeline or a series of trucks to get in it very early production moving, uh, thus allowing us to sort of uh, gain time to put in a more substantial development. But um, it's not that far from the mainland in any circumstance, and so we have a ready market uh, for us uh, already in place. And uh, obviously, because it's onshore, we believe that this will be a relatively easy and uh, uh, cheap uh, method of production. You know, gentlemen, here in the United States, we buy so much oil from people who, frankly, don't like us very much. Uh, how do uh, Australians feel about Americans who are essentially oil's biggest customers? Well, I think Australia, you know, has a, a uh, very long history, uh, you know, going way back uh, because I'm a miner. Uh, the, we had a, uh, uh, our own little rebellion against uh, the empire, uh, <laughs> and... Uh, so, uh, and that was actually sponsored by some uh, uh, soldiers that did come from the U.S. It's little known, the Eureka Stockade, which was a, uh, which is a, uh, the miners uh, defending their right uh, to mine against fairly draconian um, licensing arrangements from the Crown. So it was interesting that, uh, you know, from, from that uh, Eureka Stockade, then we obviously went to the Second World War, and really, in a lot of senses, you know, uh, being born in Australia, uh, you know, and then uh, you know we uh, were very conscious that uh, you know the Battle of the Coral Sea basically saved Australia from uh, you know being invaded, uh, and that was uh, obviously uh, mainly the U.S. force. And then obviously uh, you know Australia's had you know strong ties, uh, Vietnam uh, going in with the U.S. and uh, you know and obviously uh, with Iraq and uh, um, now Afghanistan. So you know Australia's always had a very close relationship with the US. In fact, I think it's the closest thing to the 51st state that uh, the US has got. Um, and uh, basically the strategic relationship has been that we have uh, you know, very much rely on uh, you know, the US strategically. And I think that the US also strategically, uh, one important thing about this project is that it, you know, both of our onshore bases at the moment, uh, you know, Amadeus Basin in Central Australia, uh, that's the same age sort of rocks as the uh, East Texas rocks which uh, produced oil and gas and the Tasmania Basin is the same age rocks in the same sea at the same time as West Texas except Tasmania, Tasmania was never explored. In addition to that we have the Tasmania's oil shale, the richest source rock in the world so you know strategically that could be a very important uh, uh, basin for the US because if you actually look at uh, you know the uh, steaming from the USA to the Middle East for example, Australia would be a, the only, uh, you know, uh, friendly refuelling port, uh, you know, between uh, the US and uh, the Middle East. So it is an important strategic, uh, you know, alliance between Australia and America, and obviously one that's, uh, you know, been uh, sort of tested in war. So the uh, uh, the oil that we have in Tasmania is, uh, you know, heavy crude oil. So producing um, you know heavy uh, lubricating oils and uh, uh, bitumen and also uh, you know, uh, bunker fuel for uh, you know destroyers and so uh, you know it is an important uh, uh, strategic asset. 